Hello and welcome to another update video about ICP. ICP is still in an ongoing uptrend, obviously broke our trend line <clears throat> to the upside that uh, I communicated in, I think, one of the last few videos. I haven't made many ICP videos, obviously, because the chart has been extremely, extremely boring. Caught in a downtrend, now we see a little bit of upside. Um, still way off um, key levels, you know, to, to break to indicate that we're getting back to, you know, a sustainable uptrend. It's all about structure. You know that we want to see the um, basically the bullish structure, the five waves to the upside, the three waves down. Only then we can really give ICP um, high probabilities for a long term uptrend because we can really only analyze what we see. And the chart is caught, has been caught in a lifetime downtrend. And however, you know, when we made these videos in recent weeks, months, we said, okay, we've got five waves down to so be ready for a potential wave two corrective rally at least um, into this region between 1046 and 4236. We now need to see if the price reacts anywhere here. I explained to you in the last video that we have to be a bit careful about this resistance area because literally <clears throat> the only retracements I can measure, they start here at this high that was made in September 21 with the wave one to the downside. It's a five wave move down, right? And a uh, corrective rally now. These are the key resistances. So for this wave pattern, this bearish count, we have five waves up, possibly three waves down. Key resistance would be $42.36, but um, it will not be invalidated. This wave count really, so we can't really take it off the chart until we see a break above $87. That is the invalidation point and also bullish breakout point. Yeah, but it's uncertain what it's uncertain what this was. So it's it's tricky. Okay, so we can of course give it a chance to to get into an uptrend. The local trend is up now at least finally, even though not really. I mean, all it's doing at the moment is well, the multi-hour charts are up. Yeah. But all it's doing really is so far just putting in a higher high. What we want to see next is a higher low as well. Possibly even a retest of this descending trend line to confirm that there could be another rally. In the white count, that would be a C wave. Or in the yellow count, it would be a third wave. Right. So now that it's showing some, <laughs> some life yeah, after it uh, broke above that trend line here, that was basically the breakout point that we uh, indicated, um, which should then send the price into this region, which happened. Um, now it, it makes sense to at least track in parallel a more bullish scenario as well, that you can see what actually needs to happen to confirm a more bullish, <clears throat> yeah, a more bullish outlook, really. And it will be that yellow count, but we need basically after we put in a, a three wave move up, we need to see a wave four and five as well. So I think it still warrants um, caution here, of course, you know, um, so you can say I had, you know, some people recommended to completely ignore the move down um, in the analysis because of manipulation or whatever. And, you know, you can never, and you can never ignore, you can never ignore um, price history. It's data that's there on the chart. Now, you know, of course, you know, we, we can, we can do a new count from, from down here which we're doing, which is the yellow count, okay? So uh, while I'm not ignoring this because chart context is important, obviously any chart can always restart um, a new impulse or something, right? Or a, a new rally to all-time highs, but it would need to follow certain patterns and so on, and that would be the yellow pattern. We need to see five waves up. Um, and we're tracking that local uptrend, and I will try to give you the key levels that the price needs to hold to keep climbing. So, um, but at the moment, obviously, it's gone, right? It's, it's gone. It's now ready into resistance, um, broken out. And now it's just about waiting and seeing how far it goes. And we can track that with our microstructure. So I can't really give you a very good micro count here. But best I can see <clears throat> within the white wave count, this would obviously be an ABC structure. So we've got five waves up got five waves up in wave A. Now you could argue that maybe that could also be a wave one. The move down in a wave two or B wave. And we're now in a wave C to the upside or it could be a third wave in wave one. So I'm not labeling all options here, 
but I, I might want to, you know, I might show you here how this would play out in a in the uh, more bullish impulsive count. So it would be a wave one here instead of the A wave. It's five waves up. It was a very shallow B wave or wave two. And then this would be instead of a wave C, this would be a third wave. Then we get a four and a five. Now that wave count also allows us to understand which levels need to hold now to maintain upside pressure. And the key level to watch here and to use as base is the B wave low or the wave two low. They're the same. It's the low point that was made at four dollars and four. What we can do, in tr I often say that if we are in an impulse and the C wave seems to be an impulse or the third wave, yeah. Um, if we are in such a pattern, then what we can do is we can use the fifty percent retracement level to track basically the uptrend, and that gives us a micro support level, and that's the fifty percent retracement level typically, and that's at six dollars and ninety five. So as long as that level is holding, it should allow us or it should allow the price to keep climbing. Yeah, um, that's really the main support. That's the main support. If really wave four starts, this would be the support level. Now, I'm not saying it needs to go down that much, but it's going below that level will significantly increase the well, it, may, it will mean that probably we are already in the wave B yeah, or something more bearish. Basically, that this immediate uptrend is over tells you a lot about the risk. You might want to use, um, but the micro count is uncertain. So you might want to use the last swing low. If you're looking for a closer support, then we would be looking at 856, but it's less reliable. 856 is really micro, micro support. And um, what are the next levels to watch now? Now that it broke above the first line of resistance, the next level to watch is at $15.74. And then we've got $23.68. AVEX is basically already here, the 61.8. Oh, not, not yet. It's sort of between the 50% and the 61.8. So I think here it's just sort of um, watching for, waiting for a bit of structure um, to get some clarity about the movement. Once we get a pullback, it will be interesting to see if it's going to be corrective or impulsive. If it's an impulsive move down, then the wave two already topped. Yeah which would be very bearish. If it's a corrective pullback, it could set us up for a rally early in 2024 for the next move up um, in wave C or wave three. Yeah. So these are the patterns to watch. Um, yeah, and what that means, if anybody traded that breakout, for example, remember a couple of, week, couple of, couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, talked about here this, this breakout point. So if anybody traded a breakout, I'm not a breakout trader, but if anybody did, it might be wise to um, just move up the stop loss at least. So don't let that trade turn into a loser. The long term chart is highly uncertain. Yeah. Um, so I just want to mention that. But besides, yeah, the short term trend is still up. No sign of a top in place there. No sign of a top in place. Looking at some of the indicators, you see it's going to the uh, through the roof here. The momentum. It's overbought now. I think it's is the <laughs> the most overbought. Um, reading on the RSI on the daily. Now that typically indicates a strong trend, obviously, for example, in a third wave, yeah, or maybe even in a C wave, whereas then the C wave would be an impulse. So probably within that C wave, some kind of a third wave. But again, the micro count doesn't make much sense. It makes more sense to just simply track bullish support. So yeah, trend is up. So no bearish divergence. So until we see any divergence, um, I think it can... I mean, we, we would need to see some kind of a divergence to get uh, a signal on the indicator that is coming down. Um, we don't need a divergence, though, to come down. But for now, there is nothing that would, um, let's say, be concerning. A lot of people say if something is overboard, it's bearish. It's actually just indicating a strong trend. Looking at the four-day chart, it's the strongest reading as well, I guess, on all the time frames. So weekly. Yep. So um, just overboard, uh, but uh, again, that doesn't mean it's bearish, as many people would say. <clears throat> it's rather just um, indicative of a strong trend. So, but we're watching these obviously for signals of bearish divergences. For now, nothing. Also, short term, as we've seen, there is no signal that a top is forming here anywhere at the moment. This move up rather indicates maybe a triangle pattern, bullish pennant that might lead to the next breakout here on the ICP chart. Yeah, 
So these can be penance. So it might be a smaller degree way four here, for example, that often happens. Um, but yeah, support levels should be clear. Next resistances should be clear. Uh, levels that need to be broken to indicate a more bullish trend long term should be clear as well. So you should have, have everything. Uh, hopefully you like the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.